video, we'll introduce you to the basic principles of impact calculus in debate. Impact calculus refers to the process of weighing the beneficial outcomes of a case against the detrimental outcomes. Today, we'll answer the following questions. What are impacts in debate? Why are they important in round? And what are the methods of impact calculus? Let's begin with an example. Let's say the debate resolution is that animal testing should be banned. What are the reasons to support this or reject it? An affirmative debater might make the argument that animal testing is inhumane, unnecessarily used to develop cosmetic products, and validates an anthropocentric worldview that prioritizes human life over all other forms. A negative debater might make the argument that animal testing can be regulated to ensure humane treatment of animals, that it's critical for the development of new medications that could save lives, and that we have a moral obligation to protect human life. The debaters would need to weigh these issues for the judge to help them decide which ones matter most. Impacts are a critical part of case structure. They are the final element in advantages and disadvantages, which are often structured to include uniqueness, the world as it is now, link, the plan action that changes the status quo, internal link, the effect of this change, and impact, the short-term and long-term outcomes. Impacts are important because they are the so what of the argument. Why should we care? You need this element because they are what makes your idea stick. It's also helpful to categorize impacts in two different ways. The first category is proximal impacts. These are impacts for which there are close causal links in the chain of logic. They tend to have higher probability, but lower magnitude. For instance, an economic recession that results in poverty would be considered proximal. The other category is black swan impacts. This comes from a metaphor that refers to rare, surprising events that have big impact. For instance, arguing that reducing the number of H-1B visas the U.S. accepts leads to a reduction in skilled workers, leads to the U.S. falling behind in technology, science, and medicine, leads to a power vacuum that leads to nuclear war, would be an example of this. The impacts tend to have high magnitude, we all go extinct, but lower probability. Different judges will be persuaded by different things, and including both types of impact can give you a strategic advantage. If you lose one argument, you can still win the other. Generally, there are three metrics debaters use to do impact calculus. These include magnitude, time frame, and probability. Magnitude asks us to consider which impacts are bigger. What is the extent and significance? When you're just starting out in debate, even this simple premise can be enough to work with. However, we can also think about magnitude in more nuanced ways. For instance, we might consider the scope of the impact. This could be quantitative in the sense that you compare numbers. Are thousands of people impacted or hundreds of thousands? You might also think about this in terms of local, national, or global impacts. Is this affecting one state or does it have international implications? And sometimes impacts are transgenerational. This takes a long-term view and makes the argument that the current living generation will feel the effects, but the next generation will too. Severity is another way to think about magnitude. How bad is the outcome? For instance, it might be unpleasant but endurable. An economic recession may decrease quality of life, but has the potential to turn around in the future. Other impacts, like death or loss of a culture's history, are irreversible. Finally, you can argue that an impact is bad because it will disproportionately affect a certain population, native peoples, the elderly, etc. And thus we have a moral imperative to prevent it. Time frame is the next method of impact calculus. This asks us to consider when the impact will happen. Which debater's time frame is more urgent? There's a few ways you can think about this. First, the time frame might be related to systemic events. This type of impact is already happening. For instance, we already have people living in poverty in the United States. The argument here is that the problem already exists, but the plan will intensify it. Second, the time frame might be cause-effect. A specific event will immediately trigger the impact. For example, when Texas passed a law that abortions had to be performed in state-of-the-art surgical centers, most of the small clinics that performed abortions up until that point immediately closed. Finally, the time frame may be structural. Broader factors create a climate in which the impact develops. For instance, economic decline may eventually lead to resource wars. Probability is the last way to think about impacts. This asks us to consider which outcomes are most likely. 
It may be helpful to have some of the following terminology because probability happens on a continuum. For instance, if something is possible, it means it's unlikely but is feasible based on laws of logic. If something is plausible, it may ring true on face or with common sense, but perhaps there's no concrete evidence or precedence to support it. If something is probable, it means it will probably happen. The likelihood is high enough to assume it will. If it is proven, the outcome is basically guaranteed. We can be almost 100% certain. In a debate, there might be a scenario in which a country becomes a nuclear power. From there, you would likely argue about how probable it is that nuclear proliferation would lead to nuclear war. If you are new to debate, incorporating impact calculus and using some of this vocabulary can give you an edge on the competition because it means you are explaining to the judge in a clear way how they should evaluate the round. You're explicitly identifying the arguments you're winning and explaining why, and this is a good way to win a ballot. Take this time to think about the following scenario and practice impact calculus. This scenario and several others can be found online at idebate.org. Debater A might argue that the plan is guaranteed to cause a serious economic catastrophe that will decrease the quality of life of millions of people. Debater B might argue that the status quo will allow disease to run rampant through poor communities, leading to thousands of deaths over the next half century. If we were to do impact calculus, we might say that scenario A is worse in terms of quantity, millions affected versus thousands, probability, guaranteed versus likely, and time frame, immediate versus the next half century. However, we could also say that scenario B is worse because of severity. Death is more severe than reduced quality of life because it is irreversible. We cannot come back from the dead, but could recover from economic downturn. And moral principle, the deaths will disproportionately affect poor populations. Impact calculus is your chance to shape how the judge and audience evaluate the arguments made in the round. Today, we talked about what impacts are, why they are important, and three ways to compare impacts. Thanks for watching.